Marketing Your Private Practice is a podcast where you'll learn easy to implement tips and strategies to grow your business without spending all day online. I'm your host, Kathy Koliakovo, and I teach practitioners the Thrive Marketing Method to create simple and streamlined plans by focusing on long-term strategies, not just social media. Discover ways to spend less time on your marketing, attract more clients, and build the financial freedom that comes with a thriving practice. One where you have time left in your day for the people and things that matter to you. Hey, Private Practice Heroes, thanks for tuning into the podcast today. I'm your host, Kathy Koliakovo, and today as we hit close to the end of 2023, I wanted to share some easy steps to help you with your annual marketing content planning. And if you're sitting there going, I don't do that kind of planning, Kathy, well, here's the thing. I would love for you to try it because this is one of the key ways you can cut down on the time you spend doing your marketing. And you'll keep yourself from creating too much marketing too, which is actually what most practice and business owners are doing out there, creating more marketing content than they need versus not enough. So let's dive into this topic today because I want to make sure you're not doing either one of those things. I don't want you taking too much time to do your marketing, and I don't want you creating more marketing content than you need either. It all comes down to having a consistent content plan in place. And that's what I want to share with you today is the five steps so that you can create your own consistent content plan. And that way you'll have a guide that will keep you on track all year, knowing exactly how much marketing you will do, how much content you need to make it happen, and how to make it happen consistently. I'm telling you right now, content planning for marketing and business planning go hand in hand. And on the podcast last week, we were talking all about business planning. And marketing is one of the eight facets to include in your business plan that my guest, Linda McLean, was sharing on episode 75. And it's because marketing will be one of those key factors to help you achieve the goals in your business plan. I teach my clients and program members to match their business goals to their marketing plans, and then you create marketing content and do activities that will help you achieve those goals. That's what having a consistent content plan is all about. And I've spoken on this topic before. Episode 28 actually shares the benefits of having a consistent content plan. But today, I want to share what you will need to create your own plan. And that's what we're going to cover now, the five steps to create your consistent content plan. So the first step is you need to identify the cycle that you plan to follow with your anchor content. Now, anchor content is the consistent new content you want to be publishing on your website. Typically, this is going to be a blog post or the show notes if you're a podcaster like me. This content will also be the basis for your newsletters too. There is no need to reinvent the wheel here. You're going to write one article and use it as the basis for both the blog and the newsletter content. You will need to make a few changes to send the content out as a newsletter, but there's no need to create one article for the blog, one article for the newsletter, and then tons of new content for social media. That is how people burn out doing their marketing. You need one article, that's your anchor content, and that will go on your blog and you will send it in your newsletter. All you need to do here is decide how often you can consistently create this article. And yes, if you ask me, I will say the more the better here. But like many things in life, quantity is not the primary focus here. Consistency is, and that's your quality factor. How often can you consistently create a new article that you consistently will be able to use for your marketing? I don't want you creating articles and never using them. I've run into folks that do that. That's not helpful either. And the ideal schedule here is one that you can do over and over. So I can't tell you what the best consistent content plan is for your anchor content here. You've got to decide this cycle. And it's going to be one that you can do over and over and be consistent and do it regularly. That is the most important part of this decision. 
Now, I always say start slow, build a habit, build your skills, and increase both of them. Then you can get more consistency, you become more comfortable with everything, and so you can do it more often. But starting out, always start slow and steady and be consistent, okay? So what you want to do here for step one is choose that cycle How often can you be consistent creating a new anchor piece of content? Then we move into step two, and that is identifying the catalyst content you're going to need for each cycle. Now, the catalyst content is the content you create that leads people to read or consume or listen to your anchor content. It's the way that you remind or encourage your online community or people on your email list that you have new content out there and that they can go read it. Catalyst content is mainly the content you're going to put out on social media. Some of it will be new content you create from the anchor content you just wrote. And some of your catalyst content out there will be evergreen content that you have and can be used and reused over time. These all put together create the content you need for your consistent content plan. Now, there's six types of catalyst content we generally use. One is a blog promotional post. So this is simply exactly what it says. It is a short piece of content. It could be long. It could be short, to be honest. But the idea is it is a sales piece of content because you want people to click something and go read that blog. A blog promotional post is all about getting people to read the blog. So you want them to go read that article you have on your website. Or if you're a podcaster, you want them to go read the show notes or listen to the podcast. So you're really promoting something back on your website. You're going to have a link in it and tell people to go do something, click and go read or listen. Okay. That's a first piece of Catalyst content. Another one is what I call brilliance business tips. So these are really pieces of content we pull from the article. These are tips and information you'll pull from the article anchor content you created from that article that will educate people and give them some added information that they may not have thought before, something that educates them and gives them some information which you are pulling right out of that content. We're not creating it brand new. You've already written the content. You're going to pull it out and use it. Then we have a third type of content, which is called engagement posts. So this is the type of content where we want to try and encourage people to respond back to us. Maybe put a comment in, DM you, talk to you, networking, connecting. This is the kind of stuff you might put a poll in a story on Instagram, or you might ask questions online. You're trying to incite people to engage back and connect with you. So that's what engagement posts are all about. And sometimes you can pull some of that right from your article as well. Or you could ask, do you find yourself easily able to create consistent content and do your marketing regular? Or are you someone that does it on a random basis? And then you could just ask for those responses back and forth. That's what an engagement post is all about. Often this will be a question that I asked based on the content in the article. Then we have lead magnet or product promotional posts. And you got it. These are all about promoting our lead magnets or our products and services. Now, with these, they're same kind of thing as a blog promotional post. You're looking for people to take an action. So they're a piece of sales content. You want to share some tips and information about your free lead magnet you have and give them a link to sign up for it. This is actually evergreen content. So it is not the new content you're going to necessarily pull from your article, but it is something you should do as part of your consistent content plan. You should be having a stash of these posts about your lead magnet or about your products, your programs, your services that encourage people to go learn more about them. For some people, this may be a consult, a free discovery call as well. The idea is here that you want to have some content out there that takes people back to your landing page where they can sign up for the lead magnet or book a call with you or sign up for your products or services. 
So you want to look at having some of those there. This is evergreen content because it's not timely. It's not dated. We're not pulling it from the anchor content. It is literally something you have a stash of that you add into your consistent plan every cycle that you put your content out there. Then you may have short videos, which are under 60 seconds, or long videos, which are ones that are over two minutes. So these are another type of catalyst content that you could have. So short videos, most people would know these these days as reels on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok videos. So short videos that may actually share a brilliance tip, they might promote a blog post, they might encourage the engagement. You're trying to do one or the other of those in your videos. So those are the six types of catalyst content you could use. And I always want to remind you that you do want to mix up your content. You want to make sure you have some business content, so tips and information. You want to make sure you have some sales content, which is the kind where you want them to sign up for a lead magnet or a discovery call or click a link and read an article. When they take an action, that's a sales post, okay? Then the other kind is persona content. So this is the kind of content where you may get out there and they learn a bit more about you. You're not sharing too much deeply personal information, but your persona, you want them to get to know you, especially where you're a service-based business. When people are buying you and your expertise, they want to know who you are so they can trust that you're the person to work with. So you want to have that mixture of business sales and persona content when you have your content all put together. So I just encourage you to think about making sure that you are what I doing what I call acing your content, A-C-E, amplify, convert, and engage. So when you create your content in a way that you're mixing up that purpose behind the content, amplify, business, convert is sales, and engage is persona. So they're all about making sure you have a mix of what you're doing out there so that you're not putting all sales posts out there or no sales posts so that you're not putting any tips or information out there. You want to have a good mixture so people get to see all sides of you and it mixes up the content so it doesn't get boring for people that are following you as well. So you will need to determine from this list what kind of content, catalyst content that you want to use. Now, this may be dependent on the cycle you chose in step one, and it's also going to help you determine what's going to happen in step four. So we'll talk a bit more about these in a bit. But if you do want to learn a little more about anchor and catalyst content, you can check out the blog that I have on these two types of content that you need to attract clients to your practice or business. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. That kind of content, when you're putting it out there on a regular basis, it is part of your consistent content plan, but it also helps you when you're focused on having the mixture, it helps your marketing get improved results. Now, we're going to jump into the third step here, which is choosing what social media channels you're going to use for your online marketing. And this is all about deciding where you want to be active online and where you want to put your catalyst content out there. And your answer should not be everywhere. You really need to decide where your ideal client is most active online and think if that is a place you can be active too. And if that's a match, then you're going to check yes for using that social media channel. Now, this may take you some time to determine if people are active out there and engaging out there. So sometimes you may have to do a test of some of these channels. You might have to do some research, check your insights on content you have going out there already and see if it's reaching people, if they're engaging with it. And sometimes I like to tell you to look at who's engaging with it too. A lot of times I will find in particular in the dietitian world that people are getting reactions from people, but it's from fellow dietitians, not potential clients. Okay. So you do have to look at your insights to know who you're reaching with your content and to decide if that channel is appropriate for where you want to spend your time. This is something that will adjust as you go through the cycle of marketing and figure out things and kind of narrow down what's working and what isn't. So it isn't going to necessarily be set in stone, but please don't go out there trying to go, you know, full focus on every channel out there, that will tire you out and burn you out. Start with one or two and then get a little busier, but do it by checking those insights as well. 
And I will tell you the secret sauce to making social media marketing work, especially for private practice and service-based business owners, is you. If you cannot get on any of these social media channels to connect and network with people, if you're never doing that, you will have a hard time getting your marketing to work, especially when people are buying your expertise. They want to get to know you. So if you're never there, you're never live, you're never connecting, you're never interacting, it will be really hard for folks to see you as a real person. And that's who they want to hire, a real person, not a robot. So decide for step three what social media channels you want to show up on, and then this step is done for now. We'll get back to it a little bit when we come into the fourth and fifth step as well of thinking about where we want to put and how often this catalyst content that we're going to use. So the next part here, step four, is setting a schedule for your catalyst content. So you have a cycle to follow with your anchor content. You know what kind of content that you want to put out there. And you know what channels you're going to use for your online marketing. Now you need to determine how much content you want to put out there, how many posts you want to have happen online, and set a schedule for the content. Now this schedule will really be based on two things. One is your cycle of anchor content. So that's how often you plan to create that new article, that new anchor content. So this really means, are you going to do a monthly blog and newsletter? Are you going to do it every other week? Are you going to do it weekly? Whatever you decide for the cycle, you're going to combine that with how often you want to show up online on your social media channels. Now, by show up online, I don't mean go live all the time. I even mean how often you want to have content that you're going to pre-schedule show up online. So when you look at these two things, your cycle of anchor content and how often you want to show up online, that's going to help you set your schedule because you'll know how often you want to have posts or content go on each social media channel. And this is the schedule you want to put into place. Ultimately, we're going to get to having a list of every post type that you want to go on every social media channel and how often. But that's what we want to get to here. What content do you want to put out there? How often do you want it to go on each channel? And what channel is it going to go on? That's where you're going to look at step two, that types of catalyst content that you want to put out there and fit it into the schedule. Then we get into step five. And step five is the last part of creating your consistent content plan. And that is making a list of the elements needed for your catalyst content. So this list will be things like, what images do you need for your content? How many captions are you going to need for social media posts? How many videos do you need? And then you want to have a set list so that you know every time you create that anchor content, you know exactly what items you need for your catalyst content. You know exactly how many posts that you need to have, how many captions to make, how many images to make, how many videos to make. This is your list of elements. The catalyst content list is the thing that keeps me on track the most with my marketing. Every time I do my anchor content, which for me is the podcast, I know exactly what will happen with the marketing content for it. I know that we need five different types of posts. I know that we have six different types of images we create. And we resize and repurpose some of those to use in many different ways. And this is what this whole process is all about. You're going to need to go back here to step four and check out the schedule you've set in play. And from that, you need to decide how much actual new content do you need, new images and new captions, and how many of those can be reused to fill in the schedule and get the content you want out there and all the channels. So what this means is, I can tell you right now, let's say you end up with a schedule that has 15 items you want to put out there every month. So maybe you want to have some brilliance tip posts that go on Instagram and Facebook. Maybe you want to have a video every week that you're going to do, like a short video, a reel. Maybe you want to have a couple blog promotional posts out there, a couple lead magnet promotional posts as well. And that's what you want to have in play. So let's assume that you put this all together and you look at the schedule and maybe you have 15 items on your schedule for the month. I'm going to tell you right now, 
just because you have 15 things on the schedule to go out there, you're not going to need 15 pieces of different content. This is where the power of repurposing comes into play. This is the entire Thrive Marketing method that I teach in the Thrive Marketing Academy. It's all about repurposing. Here's an example from a training I did on consistent content planning. So we had someone who wanted to do a monthly blog and a newsletter. The schedule they set up meant they would need 14 pieces of Catalyst content to use for their schedule. They would also need 13 images and two short videos to use. And this would cover everything for their blog, their newsletter, and all of the Catalyst content for their social media posts. But with all the planning and repurposing that you can actually do, what they truly needed for all of this was six captions for social media, so six posts, four images, and two videos. Six captions, four images, and two videos become 14 pieces of Catalyst content plus the blog plus the newsletter. That's all they needed to make to do their entire consistent content plan for a month. So this is where the repurposing and reusing things comes into play. Just because you need to have or you have 14 things in your schedule or 15 things, whatever it is, it does not mean you need to have and create brand new from scratch 14 new posts for every different social media channel. You actually only need six because you can repurpose them and use them on each of the channels as it works out the best way possible. Sometimes you're going to have to make a couple little changes, but for the most part, you are not writing brand new 14 different captions to go with all of that content. You only need a few because you can repurpose them. And that's what a consistent content plan looks like. Most people will look at it and think, holy crap, I need to create 14 different captions and have 14 different images and then make two videos. No way. That is not how you're going to get ahead. How you're going to get ahead with your practice or your business is by following a list of what you actually need to create and then repurposing it in different ways. That's what a consistent content plan looks like, and it's how it helps you save time so that you're creating less marketing, but the marketing that you're doing is actually going to do more for you and your practice or your business. All of these five steps will help you create your own consistent content plan, and that becomes the driving force behind your new marketing that you do on that regular cycle. We're also going to, of course, mix in some of our evergreen content to fit in here too. And in the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to break this all down. I've got part two coming for you, and I'm going to give you an example of how this would look for an actual business or practice. So be sure to hit follow wherever you're listening to this podcast so you get notified when the next episode is live, and that will actually be January 2nd, 2024. And that episode will be the part two of this, taking you through the five steps and giving you examples for an actual business. But for now, your action step from today's lesson is to review steps one to three and maybe four and be ready for part two of this lesson, which is where I'm really going to dive in and show you in particular how to work with steps four and five. They are the most confusing of these five steps, I'll be honest. But when you have it all done, then you have that consistent content plan in place. And it is a plan that gives you a list of every piece of content to create for each cycle where you create that consistent new anchor content. So be sure to check the show notes page at marketingyourprivatepractice.com slash 76 to grab the links to the blog and the other podcast I referenced in this episode. They will help you as you work through on these initial steps to create your own plan. And this is Kathy Koliakovo signing off, wishing you all the best as we finish out 2023 and get ready for the new year. And remember, to thrive in practice means having a plan and a guide for your marketing so that you can be consistent because consistent marketing gets consistent results every time. And that's what I want to see for you. I'll see you next time. You can find all of our show notes and resources mentioned at marketingyourprivatepractice.com. Be sure to connect with me on Instagram at pepperitmarketing and say hi. 
I'd love to hear any feedback you have and make sure to rate and review the podcast and hit subscribe on your favorite player so you don't miss any future episodes.